Genesis chapter 22, verses 6, 7, and 8. The Bible tells us Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The wood and the fire are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. So I want to talk on this morning about the child's question. On this youth day, I want to talk about the child's question. Verse 7 tells us Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, the fire and wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? That was the child Isaac's question. The fact is, questions are common. Even at this time of the year, I think that many of us offer questions even for the new year. Uh -huh. We may be asking ourselves, what new people might I meet this year? What new endeavors will I try this year? Will I try any new food this year? I mean, what personal changes might I make from January to December? Life is filled with questions. Uh -huh. People of all ages really ask questions, but I must tell you, when I was a child, I almost thought that there was an age requirement for asking questions. <laughs> you see, when you're under 18, there are those who would always say that children are to be seen and not heard. So is there an age requirement for questions? Maybe you have to turn 18 before you can ask a question. Or maybe the age is 21. <laughs> Maybe the age is when I tell you, you can ask me a question. I don't know, but I tell you, church, I hope that there's not an age requirement for asking questions, especially nowadays. The reason why I say that is because I read about a young man recently, 17 years old, who took his own life. Maybe you read this story. This young man, 17 years old, his name was Bryce. Bryce he was killed by a freight train. His mom, she posted a Facebook video, this message she was telling about what this young man seemed to be dealing with before he took his own life. He was a Georgia Tech football recruit on his way to a great future, this young man. His mom said that days before his death, he was talking in circles. She said that she noticed that it seemed that her son was acting paranoid. But then she said this, which I thought was really interesting when pertaining to questions. She said he had a lot of questions about spirituality and life. Mm -hmm. I don't know who may have answered those questions for young Bryce. I don't know if he were here now if adults would take time to stop to address his questions. But I know that children have a lot of questions. And I know that the way they understand the world is through their questions. And the fact of the matter is, all of us human beings make better sense of the world through our questions. You know there are just things that we just don't understand. So we raise the question, why sickness? Why disease? Why poverty? All right. Why pain? Why does it seem that there's wicked people all around? But you know, those of us who are soldiers of the faith, we sometimes just have to wait for some answers. You know how our foreparents see it. You know, they told us, they said, by and by, Lord, when the morning comes. Said your grandma ever sang this song? When all Until by and by. We don't know how old 
Isaac was. We don't really know how old Abraham's son was. There are many commentators who say that he may have been in, in his 20s, and there are those who say he may have been in his 30s. But what we do know is that he was Abraham's child. Yes. And this child had a question. Isaac didn't have to wait for by and by. Isaac is there with his father, and they're walking along the way. The Bible tells us they are together traveling along this road, and Isaac seems to analyze what's going on. He analyzes the situation. Isaac, this child, looks around, and he knew the sacrificial process. We know he was old enough to do that because of the question that he raised. I've seen sacrifices before. I mean, I see the wood for the burnt offering. Uh -huh. This young man is analyzing. I see the knife. Dad, I see the fire making material, but where's the animal sacrifice? You see, young people have an ability to sit back and look around and analyze some things. Something just doesn't seem right here. You see, the burnt offering had to be cut up into pieces to ensure that there were no defects or blemishes on the sacrifice. He knew that. The burnt offering, according to your financial situation or your financial ability, people were able to bring a, a, a goat, they could bring a sheep, they could bring a lamb, they could even bring a dove or a pigeon. So this young man knew all that, but something doesn't seem right about this. We can learn something from this young man. We ought to be able to look around. Uh -huh. And recognize when something just doesn't seem right. right. And you know, January is a good time to do that. Uh -huh. It's a good time to look around at our lives and see if things are what they should be. A good time to evaluate, to inspect. You know, January is the time uh, I'm going to lose weight. <laughs> but let me analyze this thing. If I'm going to lose weight, it's been 12 days already, and I've resolved that I'm going to lose weight. This is January the 12th. Well, I need to analyze this thing. If I don't step away from fatty foods and step into a gym, I'm not going to lose weight. Analyze that thing. It's a good time. January is a good time. Uh-uh. I'm going to fast. Get excited about fasting. It's a good thing. It's a time where you deny yourself carnal pleasures. Let's analyze this though. If I deny myself a chicken wing well, and a soda pop, well, uh, but I'm not spending time with the Lord, then my fasting is in vain. Think this thing through now. Take time that's right, that's right. to see what's really going on. I want to save money. It's January. I can save so much, and, and by the end of the year, I'll have what I need. And so I'm going to visit my bank account more than I visit Amazon.com or Hayes Mall. Some of you are glad that that Macy's is closing over there. And oh, that the Macy's is going to help you real good. Analyze and think about what's going on. I like Isaac because he's analyzing the situation. But not only is it good that he analyzed, but it's a great thing that this father recognized his son. You see, they're walking along the way, and really, if Abraham wanted to, he didn't really have to answer his son, Isaac. He didn't really have to answer the question. Can you imagine how that would play out, though, in 2020? If, let's say, here is Abraham and Isaac walking together, and Abraham chooses not to answer his son's question. Oh, can't you see young Isaac going to Google, typing in, the wood and fire are here, but what do people do when there's no lamb for the burnt offering? Ah, uh -huh. oh, Google will be ready to answer that child's question. Come on, sis. So then, wow, he's sitting there. What might pop up? Hmm, Isaac. One person might say, keep walking with your father. But then another result would pop up and say, run for your life, Isaac. <laughs> this is what happens when Google raises your children. Uh, well, on, see. One hand would say, trust those who love you and who have experienced young people because they've been down the roads that you're trying to go down and they're trying to make you a better generation than they were. That might be a result. But then another result.
result will say, oh, that's old school, young people. You don't have to listen to them at all, Isaac. Don't listen to your dad. He doesn't really know what's going on. That's what happens when Google raises your child. And not to mention that a result may have popped up and said, trust your father, Abraham. He knows what he's talking about. But then another result may have said, young man, young people, do what your friends say. Do what's popular. For a matter of fact, do whatever you feel. You only live once. Don't let Google raise your children. Don't let the internet raise your children. Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram, they're waiting to give them answers. If you're not ready to answer the question, guess what? There's a worldwide web out there waiting to enter your house electronically. But thanks be to God that Abraham took the time to listen to his child, to recognize his child. And you know, we ought to be grateful that when we become children of God, we have a father who will listen to us. We have a father just like Abraham recognized his boy. God recognizes us. God tolerates us. God supports us. And that's something to be thankful for that we have a father. Our father that we can call on anytime and he recognizes us. You know, I believe that we ought to give God a recognition ceremony. We go through life recognizing when you get a promotion on your job. We go through life recognizing when you graduate from some school. We go and we recognize all of these things. We need to give God a, rec a recognition ceremony. The one who made the sun rise. Thanks be, that's God. The one who put the moon up in the sky. Thanks be, that's God. The one who woke you up this morning. Oh, it's time for us to give God a recognition ceremony.
that's got his own. You got to get to the point where you know God for yourself. Young people, there's going to come a time when you are going to have to enter the church doors because that's what you want to do. There's going to have to come a time when you want to serve God because that's what you want to do. Even adults, there's going to have to come a time when you don't just do things because Pastor Hines told you to do it. But you do it because God said do it in his word. Serve me, bless me, love me, worship me because God said so. It's got to be some God said so spirits in the church. My question was, why does the ways of the 
You need to go ask God. When you need wisdom, you need to go ask God. When you, when you need understanding, you need to go ask God. Many times we feel comfortable asking everybody else questions, but we don't ask God. And so then, when you have the question of why or where can I find safety, you need to go to God. And God will lead you to Proverbs 18.10. The name of the Lord is a strong time. Yeah. The righteous run into it and are safe. Yes. But Lord, what about when I feel oppressed? You need to go to the Word. You need to turn to Psalm 9, 9 and 10. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed. A stronghold in times of trouble. But what about when I feel like nothing is going on? good around me. I understand it's a new year. It's 2020 but I've got 2019 on my back. You need to go to Psalm 3410. You see those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. But what about when I'm feeling like my mind is out of control? You know how it is. Sometimes I'm by myself and I feel like I'm going to go crazy. You need to ask God about that. And God will lead you to Isaiah 26 verses 3 and 4. God Keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust you. Is your mind steadfast so that you can have a peaceful mind? But what about when I'm weak? What about when I feel like I can't make it another day? I come to church. I come to Bible study. I come to Sunday school. I read my Bible. I give and I pray. But I still feel weak. Where do I go, Lord, when I feel weak? You open up your Bible. Sacrifice. 